if you ever see this photo show up on your Instagram feed, don't like it, don't comment on it, and don't follow the account. Here's why. This is the legend about a ghost girl named Teresa Fidalgo. Now, a few years ago, thousands of people were posting this photo on Instagram with the caption, I am Teresa Fidalgo, and if you don't repost this, I will sleep beside you forever. The legend goes that there was a car full of friends driving in the mountains when they pick up a hitchhiker standing on the road going by the name of Teresa Fidalgo. So she gets in the car, she's completely silent. She's just sitting there as they're driving along. And then suddenly she points out the window and says, that's where I died. So people are told that they have to repost this story or her ghost will sneak into their room every night for the rest of their life. All right, let's talk about Smile Dog. Smile Dog is apparently a cursed image that has been going around the internet for quite some time now. This dog apparently takes the form of a Siberian Husky smiling a little too wide. It's also said if you don't spread this dog's image over the internet after seeing it, you will die. Some people reported after not sharing the photo, the Siberian Husky shapeshifts into their room as this demon dog here. This dog will sadistically torture you until you share the image, and if you don't, he will kill you. Some even say they'll see Smile Dog in the bushes watching them as they're walking home or walking to their car. So, what do you guys think about Smile Dog and his cursed image? The Native American Skinwalker is a shape-shifting being that goes by many different names in many different cultures. Legend has it that they can take many forms, morphing from human to animal, and sometimes even both simultaneously. Apparently they reek of the stench of death, and when in animal form, sometimes some human features can remain the same, such as their eyes, hands and legs, etc. can remain in human form and they will apparently appear to walk as if they are injured. They're said to have superhuman abilities and can mimic the voices of those that they have killed, even the voices and the cries of your loved ones to make you go out searching for them, only to find them waiting for you. This method is said to be a common one used to trick people away from their trails and away from their safety, innocently wandering off to meet their demise. Now the creepiest part about them and the whole reason why nobody likes talking about them is that they know when you're talking about them. Terrifying games you don't want to play part 15. The man outside game. Every time you win this game you will be granted an extra year of life. But each time you lose, 10 years will be subtracted from your life. To play this game correctly, you will need to unlock all of your windows and make sure that they are uncovered and then wait until 2 a.m. Once you have done this, you will need to go up to each window individually, knock three times, and say, Man outside, man outside, are you there? If you hear what seems to be a voice in the wind telling you to run and hide, pay attention to those instructions. The game has now begun. For the next several hours, you will be hunted by a mysterious entity known as the man outside. He is not allowed to come inside himself, but his shadow will attempt to drag you towards the windows so that he can see you. If he finds you before sunrise, the game is over, and I'm sorry, but you've lost. However, if he has not found you by sunrise, knock on the windows once more and say, Man outside, man outside, you have lost. Upon hearing this, he will disappear immediately, but you may need to chase his shadow away with a broom. Comment whether or not you would play this game, and follow for more. This is why you should always lock your bathroom door. It was the first night Marnie and her family moved into their new house. Before going to bed, she wanted to take a relaxing bath, but she could have never expected the terrifying things this would lead to. The rest of her family was in the living room watching TV, and a few moments later, Marnie ran out of the bathroom screaming. Turns out when Marnie was sitting in the bathtub, she heard what sounded like heavy breathing. Assuming it must be the wind, she tried to ignore it, but then she noticed something strange about her hair. Her hair was much longer than usual, and it was much darker than her hair used to be too. Marnie jumped out of the bathtub, but as she got up, the back of her head seemed to hit someone else's nose. Since then, she's been too terrified to be in the bathroom alone, convinced that someone else was in the bathtub with her that night. Most terrifying urban legends from around the world. Once there was a young fisherman walking along the river when he saw a strange looking woman. She was crying and holding a baby wrapped in a blanket. So the fisherman approached her and asked her what was wrong. The woman said she was lost and asked the fisherman to hold her baby for a second so she could rest. And this is when everything went wrong. The baby seemed to grow 
grow heavier and heavier in the fisherman's arms until he could no longer move. Then the bottom half of the woman's body transformed into a snake and attacked the fisherman, drinking all of his blood from her long snake tongue. This was the urban legend of Noreona. She is the body of a snake and the face of a woman, and she often disguises herself as a mother holding a fake baby to lure her victims in. So remember next time, never hold a stranger's baby. Have you heard the creepy whispering in the change rooms at Target? So here are some more really creepy Target stories that are told from employees. There was an employee that was about to check all the change rooms before Target closed just to make sure that everyone was gone. But as soon as she walked into these fitting rooms, she got this really strange vibe. You know when you can just sort of sense that somebody is close by? Kind of like you just know when someone's watching you? Well, she just did not feel alone. So she called out, hello, we're closing now. And there was silence. So she started slowly opening the change room doors. And just as she was approaching the very last one, she heard this really weird sound. It was this muffled whispering coming from behind the door. She wasn't able to make out what it was saying, but as she approached it, she put her ear against the door to like figure out what they were saying. But as soon as she did that, the whispering stopped. So she said, hello. She began knocking, but there was no sound. There was no reply. And when she tried to open the door, it was locked. So she knelt down to peer under the door and to her surprise, she saw dirty, wet, bare feet. This person wasn't wearing any shoes. So she freaked out and ran to get another employee. But when they got back to the change rooms, that very last door was open and all that was left was this puddle on the floor. So I heard about this story and it was really scary. And lastly, I have a story about the baby aisle. It's about this woman who was walking through the baby section holding a tumbler of iced tea in her hands with the lid tightly fastened. Well, as she was walking down this aisle, she suddenly felt this tug on her hair. And before she even had a second to react, the top of her cup just popped off and the ice flew out and spilled all over the floor. She ran and told the employees, but no one believed her. They thought that she just accidentally spilled it, but she was convinced that something in that aisle literally made her cup explode. Later that night, the night shift employee was looking through the security footage from the day and he saw what happened to her. And from that day forward, the employees were afraid of the baby section. If you see a tall silhouette standing in the middle of the road on a rainy night, it just might be the Rain Man. The Rain Man is a creepypasta scary story about an entity that lurks in the rain. He's said to be very tall, wearing long dark pants and a long dark coat, with long stringy black hair that gets swooped in front of his face, getting stuck to his skin from the wet rain. And his skin is extremely pale, like a sheet of paper. One story of an encounter with the Rain Man goes like this. It was during the First World War and it had been raining for several days. A soldier was sitting down in the pitch darkness of the night when he thought he saw a light out of the corner of his eyes. He turned to look, thinking maybe it was a lantern, but what he saw terrified him. Standing outside in the pouring rain was a tall figure dressed in all black with a long black coat. The soldier couldn't make out many features, but he could make out the eyes. They were huge pits with a yellow light radiating out of both of the eye pits. The figure then disappeared into the trenches, which were filled with rainwater. This is why you should never try to investigate when you hear strange noises. Once there was a boy named Tom who was walking to school when he saw a photo lying on the grass outside. He picked it up and saw it was of one of the most beautiful girls he'd ever seen. She was wearing a dress, red shoes, and had her hands formed into a peace sign with two fingers up. When he got to school, he showed the picture to his friends in hopes that they would know who she was, but no one knew. That night, he woke up to strange tapping noises on his window. It sounded like someone had crawled up to his window and was tapping on it with their nails. He saw a faint shadow, but ignored it and tried to go back to sleep. The next night, he heard the tapping noise again. This time, he got up and tried to go outside to investigate, but right as he ran out, he was hit by a car. The driver came out of the car and tried to help him, but it was too late. He then found the picture next to his body. He saw a girl holding up three fingers. The Laundry Man This is the Laundry Man, a humanoid creature. At first glance, he may look normal to you, but some things about this man just don't add up. The Laundry Man's eyes are oddly shapen, being very large in comparison to the rest of his face. And it seems as though he has a permanent grin displayed on his face at all times, and no teeth. He also has long, claw-like fingers on his hands, and seems to be trailing a mysterious, dark liquid. If you look behind him, it looks like he trailed liquid and smeared it on the door as well. It also seems as though his arms may be extremely long in comparison to the rest of his body. And it's said that the laundry man frequents laundry and any place where people do laundry. Please do bunny man. Something is not quite right with this rabbit. 
this is a human-sized bunny with extremely long arms and human-like hands. Looking at this photo just gives you the feeling that something is wrong. This creature was created by Trevor Henderson in 2018 and he also created some lore to go along with it. The story goes like there were two people hunting for cryptids in the woods at a campsite one night when in the middle of the night, the guy woke up and heard the girl yelling for help out in the woods in the distance. He raced out of his tent and into the woods and then he realized that he couldn't find the girl anywhere. And that's when he heard her calling his name again, but this time he heard her calling for him from the campsite. She had never left and something was mimicking her. The man was about to run back to the campsite when something grabbed his ankle and pulled him backwards. That thing, obviously, was the bunny man. Can you do the smile room, please? There is something not quite right about this room. Although this looks like a room with teeth in the doorway, there is a deeper explanation to it. The smile room isn't even a room at all. The smile room is actually a mysterious being which manifests itself in the form of a door to lure people inside. Once people enter through this doorway, the smile room eats them up never to be seen again. It's also said that the smile room can manifest as a humanoid creature pictured here. At first glance, this creature might look like just a normal human, but upon closer inspection, it actually is made up entirely of teeth. Do creature with the red spots, please. This is creature with the red spots. He's a giant creature. Not much is known about this creature, but it is estimated that he's about 1,000 feet tall and weighs a whopping 490,000 tons. If one car weighs two tons, imagine how many cars it would take to match the weight of just this creature alone. It's also suspected but has not been confirmed that this creature may be the same creature as Breaking News, which I've already done a video on, just with glowing red spots on its abdomen. The creature's skin is jet black in color and it has no face to speak of. And like most of Trevor Henderson's giants, it enjoys causing mayhem. This is Scribblehead. The image of Scribblehead depicts a human-like creature, but some things are just not quite right. Its body looks like it's almost in a hunchback position, and its arms are extremely long, with long, sharp claws at the end of its fingers. And its face looks like that of a skeleton, and the weirdest thing about it is that it has scribbles all over its face. This creature is said to have started out as a drawing. As you can tell, it looks very much so like a drawing, especially with the scribbles on its face. And then it was somehow brought to life and brought into the three-dimensional world. Although it's unknown how this creature was brought from a drawing into an actual humanoid. This creature is said to be about six foot seven, and it's also said that he can teleport from place to place. Can you please do more creepy games? The Love Me Game. The Love Me Game is a paranormal game in which you can summon a spirit to tell you if somebody loves you or not. And this game supposedly traces back to the Pacific Islands. The spirit in which you are trying to summon in this game is called Rakunini. I'm not sure if I said that right. By the way, disclaimer, this is for entertainment purposes only. I don't think just you try this. In order to play this game, you'll need to take a leaf, preferably a coconut leaf. It's said that you'll have to tear the leaf down the middle, but not completely. You don't want it to tear in half and hold the leaf between your pointer finger and thumb of your right hand, rubbing your fingers on it as you say this chant. Tell me, Rakunini, tell me if she loves me, tell me if she hates me, tell me, tell me, tell me. After you say this chant three times, then tear the leaf completely in half and wrap both halves around both of your index fingers. If the leaves are the same height, that means that they hate you. If they're different heights, that means that they love you. But those who want to play this game should beware, because you can also summon Rakunini for more malevolent purposes. This is Huggy Wuggy. Okay, hear me out. I remember when Huggy Wuggy first became really popular a few months ago, I was getting thousands of requests to do a video on him. At first glance, he may look like just your normal average children's video game character, but there is something a lot more sinister about Huggy Wuggy. Originating from the children's video game Poppy Playtime, Huggy Wuggy is a huge mascot-like character, towering at an estimated 10 feet tall. And to make it even creepier, it looks like he has several rows of very sharp teeth in his mouth. And something about those piercing black eyes just makes me feel very uncomfortable. And this is what Huggy Wuggy looks like when he's smiling. What's also terrifying is the high-pitched screeching noise that he makes as he lunges towards the person playing the video game. Can you do La Llorona? Sorry if I said that weird. The legend of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, is a tale in Mexican folklore. I've heard a few different versions of this, but I'm gonna tell you guys the one that I've heard the most. 
The story goes like there was a woman named Maria who had a husband and two small children. Well, Maria's husband started seeing another woman. He had a mistress. This completely shattered Maria's heart and it sent her into a deep depression. And one day she was out by the river when she saw her husband with his mistress. Seeing her husband with his mistress sent her into some sort of episode and she had a psychotic break took her children down by the river and drowned them. When she realized what she had done, she then threw herself in the river and drowned herself. Legend has it that she now roams the earth searching for her children. People who have encountered La Llorona say that they hear cries in the distance, and apparently, if you hear them far away, that actually means she's very close. If you hear them close, that means she's far away. She can also be heard crying out for her children. It's said that if you go out after dark in Mexico or the southwestern United States, you may just have an encounter with La Llorona. As she roams the riverbanks looking for children to take to their watery grave. Can you please do the bus stop? The story of the bus stop goes like there was a man named Ed who was driving home from work one day in a rainstorm. He passed the bus stop and saw a young woman standing out there getting rained on. He pulled up right beside her and asked, would you like a ride? She said yes and got into the vehicle. Then she introduced herself and he introduced himself. She said her name was Joanna. When Ed pulled up to her house, he told her, it was really nice meeting you today. I'm glad it rained. Would you like to go out sometime? She said yes, of course, and they made a plan to meet at the bus stop and that they would go out for dinner. Well, the next day, they did just that, and this started becoming a regular thing for them. They would meet at the bus stop and then go on their date. Except one day, they had a date, but Joanna never showed up to the bus stop, and Ed waited there for at least an hour. He thought to himself, gee, I hope nothing happened and he decided it'd be best if he went to her house just to find out what was going on. He pulled up to her house and knocked on the door and an older woman answered. He said, hi, I'm Ed. Joanna must have told you about me. We had a date today, but she never showed up. Is she okay? The old woman just stared at Ed for a minute and then she said, I'm Joanna's mother. She's not here right now, but why don't you come in? When Ed stepped into the living room, he saw a picture of Joanna on the mantel. He said, that looks just like her. The mom said, well, yes, that was taken when she was your age, about 20 years ago. A few days after that photo was taken, she was waiting at the bus stop and a car hit her and killed her. She's been dead for 20 years. Can you do what do you come for? This is of course another scary story from Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. The story goes like there was an old woman who lived by herself and she was rather lonely. One day she was sitting down in her house relaxing and she mumbled to herself, I wish I had some company. Right when those words escaped her mouth, a pair of feet fell down her chimney with the flesh rotting off. After the feet tumbled down, then so did a pair of legs and then a torso and arms and then a man's head. All of the extremities formed together, creating a human body. And then the man stood up with his flesh still peeling off and began dancing around the old woman's home. The old woman stood there staring at the man in terror. And then the man stopped dancing and looked down at her, looking straight into her eyes. She looked back at him and in a terrified, shaking voice, she asked, What do you come for? The man then opened his mouth and replied, I came for you. And that's how that story ends. May I carry your basket? The story goes like there was a man named Sam Lewis who was walking home one night around midnight after finishing a game of chess at his friend's house. There was nobody else out on the roads and it was quiet. But when Sam Lewis rounded the corner, he noticed that there was a woman walking ahead of him carrying a basket. He caught up to the woman and said, Hi, what are you doing out this late? But there was no answer. He looked over to her to see if he knew who she was, but she was so bundled up in scarves that he couldn't even see her face. He then asked, May I carry your basket? And she handed him her basket. And then a voice came from the basket saying, Well, that's very nice of you. And then started laughing maniacally. Sam, being confused as ever, looked into the basket and that's when he saw that there was a head in the basket. He looked at the woman and realized that's her head. That's why she's so bundled up in scarves, because she doesn't have a head. He dropped the basket and the head rolled out and then he started running. The woman's body and the head followed close behind him with the head bouncing in the air. They caught up to Sam and the head jumped up and bit him in the leg. He managed to get the head off of him and he continued running 
and then it jumped up and bit him in the other leg. And then Sam looked behind him and the lady and the head were both gone. So sad. Walking around with them blue faces. She stands down on my left.